sometimes it feels good just to let an F-bomb just go or maybe like come up with your own kind of new, like, you know, Susie Ethman <laughs> from Curb Your Enthusiasm, like your own little phrase of cursing. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's appropriate, but Ryan Christopher, <laughs> not right now. Wow. All right, calm down there, Rosanna. We know who likes to swear out of the bunch, apparently. All right. Uh, so separate studies, though, found that people who use profanity more often have higher integrity and a more verbose, uh, excuse me, verbose vo vocabulary than those who don't use expletives. And get this, there's over 170,000 words in the English dictionary, but there's probably some you use more than others. My favorite swear word's got to be, man, it's a cross between and either. I don't know, it just comes out all the time, like, what the <laughs> You say it, and it just has a universal meaning, like, off. You could use it in so many different ways. It makes you feel awesome. We've recorded over 10,000 people swearing in public is always at the top of the list. Psychologist no Timothy J is the author of Why We Curse. People swear to express their emotions. That's a part of that is venting, you know, getting out anger, frustration, surprise, happiness. Jay says it's difficult for people to swear less because it's the most physical and expressive form of speech. You're asking a deeper question, you know, like, why do we have emotions? Why don't we curb our emotions? And if we could do that, we wouldn't need psychiatry. You know, it's like, oh, just don't, don't be depressed. Don't be, don't be sad. Don't be anxious. So it's built into us. And it's no surprise we hear more swears in the city. Any place where there's a lot of people, where there's anonymity, where there's a fast pace of life, where there's more stress, yeah, where there's more hassles in public, that's the breeding ground. <laughs> that's the garden for the swearing. Maybe you know somebody that curses a little too much. So is it an addiction? I think that's a bit of hyperbole, that it's like an addiction, because your speech is, is generally controlled behavior. You know, so if you've got control of your consciousness and your awareness of surrounding, you can curb this. Jay recommends replacing curses with euphemisms like darn, shoot, or creative ones like this. For swearing, I use the word Shaka Khan so that I don't have to swear. Instead of saying I say fudge. Even schools have tried to creatively combat cussing in the classroom, like in Connecticut, where some schools ran a trial of finding students for swearing. But Jay says that all of those attempts fell flat. Some places where they try to cut down cursing, you've made kids more aware of it, and they start swearing more. So as a parent, what do you do if your kid has a potty mouth? The best thing to do is not to overreact. You know, the parents need to be cool because when the kid's pushing your buttons, you've taught them this is a powerful word. And that's not going to go away. That's ammunition. I'm going to save that for later. So the best thing is to be, you know, be a psychologist with your kid. You know, why did you say that? Are you angry? You know, can you think of another word? No matter how old you are, that's what it really comes down to, your feelings. It's that conscious awareness of, of your emotional state and trying to get a hold of, you know, like, why am I so frustrated? Why am I so angry? And stop that first. Rein in those emotions first, and then the language will come, you know, will follow. While some people might be trying to swear less, others, like this guy, they just own it. When I'm driving in traffic, I might be cut off by somebody, and I might say something like, look at that over there. That guy just cut me off. And I maybe even might want, want to lean out the window and go, F you, you. F so bottom line, don't cut that guy off. I think that's what we really took away from this segment. And I think Lori has a deep, dark secret. You just told us something. Oh, I was around 22 when I first dropped my first whatever it was. 22. I think you've made up for it. I have. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been liberating. <laughs> no kidding. Trust me. I, I, I've seen it. Stop. <laughs> no, sorry. Thanks, Ryan. You're welcome. <laughs> but never directed it. You know. <laughs>